the Battle of Arkansas Post was fought uh, January 9 through 11 of, uh, of 1863. The uh, Confederates were concerned uh, in late 1862 that the, uh, that the Union might use the Arkansas River as an avenue to attack Little Rock, so they began uh, fortifying high ground uh, up the river. The uh, fort closest to the Mississippi was, uh, was placed at Arkansas Post. Uh, there was a uh, substantial fortification uh, called Fort Hindman there and a garrison of around 5,000 troops under uh, Brigadier General Thomas Churchill. General John McClernand, uh, Illinois uh, political general who was actually a pretty competent uh, battlefield general, uh, pulled together a force of around 30,000 Union troops and a uh, flotilla of gunboats and came up the, uh, came up the Arkansas against Arkansas Post. Several uh, different attacks were made and uh, the, the uh, Confederates, even though there were just 5,000 of them, uh, put up a, really a heck of a fight. One, uh, one Union soldier uh, said, you know, uh, instead of the fighting at Arkansas Post, that uh, next hit Shiloh was nowhere, which, you know, really kind of puts it in perspective of, of the, uh, the volume of gunfire that took place. Um, the, the Confederates withstood a couple of uh, several disjointed attacks, and then the uh, then the Federals uh, basically got their entire 30,000 men together in line and were ready to just rush forward and just crush the uh, Confederate troops. And just before they uh, just before they attacked, uh, some uh, someone in the 24th Texas raised the white flag. Well, as soon as that went up, other white flags sprang up all down the, uh, all, all down the line. Uh, one, one Texas captain said it was the only intelligible thing we could do. This uh, had a couple of, uh, uh, the, a couple of impacts on, on the war in 1863. Uh, for, for one thing, uh, that loss of 5,000 men at Arkansas Post cost the Confederacy about 25% uh, of the fighting soldiers it had in the, uh, in the Trans-Mississippi at that point. Uh, it also uh, uh, helped cement the Union's uh, goal of, you know, capturing the line of the Arkansas River, uh, and that that pretty much uh, was the the uh, Union war goal for 1863 in Arkansas. On January 1st, 1863, the uh, Emancipation Proclamation took effect, uh, uh, declaring any slaves in the uh, Confederate occupied area to uh, areas to be free. Uh, that spring, Lincoln, uh, President Lincoln decided that uh, it was time to start bringing these, uh, some of these freedmen into the Army. So he, uh, he dispatched uh, Lorenzo Thomas, who was the Adjutant General of the Army, uh, b basically a desk jockey. But he sent, uh, he sent Thomas down the Mississippi River Valley to start recruiting uh, regiments out of the uh, hundreds of thousands of, uh, of freedmen who had uh, uh, flocked to the federal lines as the um, Union armies occupied areas in Louisiana, Arkansas, and Mississippi. On uh, April 6 of 1863, uh, Thomas came to, to Helena and held a, a, a rally. Um, it was like a pep rally, almost like a uh, tent revival, you know, where he you know, declared that uh, you know, these men will be soldiers and, uh, you know, any, anybody who's uh, behind me, you know, can become officers. A lot of uh, Union privates, sergeants became uh, officers in, in the uh, U.S. colored troops. Um, and on, on the day after his, uh, his rally, the first Arkansas um, infantry of African descent was, uh, was recruited. Uh, ultimately, uh, through his efforts, uh, Thomas recruited um, around 76,000 black men to serve in, uh, in the Federal Army, around 41 percent of the total number who served during the, uh, the Civil War, and a total of 5,526 black men would serve in uh, Arkansas units. Helena was, was uh, primarily important to the Federals. Um, occupied in July of 1862, uh, Helena served as a, a base for uh, operations against Vicksburg. Uh, it was also a great place. Uh, supplies uh, could, be, could be left there to be, be moved. Um, gunboats could, could stop by. Troops, um, troops would, would be stationed there for a while before, uh, before moving on. So really, it was the, um, uh, the Union toehold in Arkansas. Theophilus Holmes's plan to attack Helena was uh, uh, 
would have been difficult under the best circumstances. He wanted to do a simultaneous uh, uh, three-pronged attack, attack against three of the uh, three of the hilltop fortifications. Holmes uh, ordered the attack to begin at daylight, and that turned out to be a fatal flaw. Price, Sterling Price, who had interpreted daylight to mean dawn, sat, uh, sat back, even with the roar of gunfire all around him, and uh, did not begin his attack until, uh, until the other two attacks had faltered. As the battle began, the disjointed Confederate attack allowed the, uh, the, the Federals to uh, use their guns against, uh, against the Confederates in detail. Instead of, uh, uh, you know, instead of being attacked all at once, they were able to repulse the individual attacks. And uh, ultimately, uh, the attacks against Battery A and D just, uh, just, just petered out. Uh, Battery C was, was hammered so, uh, so terribly that uh, it was just liter literally covered with Confederate dead and pieces of Confederate dead after the, uh, after the battle. So at uh, 10.30, uh, Holmes, who had ridden his horse around on Battery C, uh, one Confederate officer thought he was looking for a merciful bullet to uh, put him out of his misery for after this failed attack. Uh, he ordered a, uh, a general retreat at, uh, at 1030 and the, and the uh, Confederates fell back. The way the Little Rock uh, campaign began was kind of, uh, was kind of interesting. Uh, initially there was uh, uh, rumors started coming around in mid-July that, uh, that Sterling Price was uh, going to march up Crowley's Ridge with 19,000 troops and invade Missouri. The, the Federals took it seriously and sent a column of 6,000 cavalrymen down uh, into Arkansas along Crowley's Ridge. Of course after, after a while they realized that there wasn't, uh, there wasn't going to be an, uh, uh, any Confederate invasion along there. But uh, since those cavalrymen were there, the, uh, the, the Feds decided to make a full-fledged uh, uh, attack on, on Little Rock. Sterling Price scouted out uh, several possible approaches to, uh, to Little Rock and then ultimately decided to, uh, to send his cavalry across at a horseshoe bend in the, uh, in the Arkansas River. On the morning of uh, September 10, um, he had his uh, uh, pioneer troops build a pontoon bridge across the, uh, the Arkansas River. A Confederate battery came out and started shelling the bridge right at, uh, right, right at uh, first light. And um, because the, of the way uh, he had set up the attack, he had, he had, ca uh, he had cannon uh, situated to where they could put a converging fire on any, any defenders on the other side. So they were quickly, uh, quickly driven back. It was almost two separate battles fought at uh, Bayou Fouche, which is just, uh, just east of the, uh, the Little Rock Airport today. Um, that, where the Confederates tried to hold back the, uh, the federal troops, but, um, but ultimately uh, Sterling Price, having um, you know, seen what had happened to uh, the, the Confederate troops at Vicksburg, decided to abandon his works on the northern side of, uh, of the Arkansas River and get, uh, keep his army intact and, and uh, retreat to the, um, to the southwest. So by the, um, by the end of the day, uh, Little Rock was in federal hands. At, um, uh, the the uh, Confederate Army uh, retreated to the, uh, to the southwest, and I think at 5 o'clock that evening, the uh, civil authorities in Little Rock formally surrendered the city to, um, to the Federal Army. The capture of Little Rock had several good points for the, for the, the uh, Federal side. Uh, you know, first and foremost, politically, it, it returned another former Confederate capital to the uh, to Union side, and it led to the establishment of a, uh, a Unionist government. Um, for, the, for the common soldier, the capture of Little Rock enabled them to leave the malarial swamps that they had been stationed in, and the, uh, the health of the Army improved immensely immediately. Uh, and for a morale, from a morale standpoint, it was, uh, it was huge for the Union. Uh, for the Confederates, it was a uh, morale disaster. Uh, again, uh, literally thousands of, of uh, Confederate troops uh, abandoned the Army. Uh, one, uh, one soldier wrote that they didn't sneak off in the night. They marched out under arms in, in squads and companies. It uh, confined the Confederate Army for all intents and purposes, to southwest um, southwest Arkansas and points uh, uh, south of there, for the duration of of the war.